Good morning, St. James family and friends. These are our announcements for the upcoming weeks. Join our prayer call, which takes place every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time, where you can start your day with prayer. Join us every Sunday before the worship service at 9.30 a.m. Central Standard Time for our Adult Sunday School. You can join us through the Zoom link on our website. Youth Sunday School will be taking a summer break and will resume in September. Register with the Youth Ministry on our website to receive information for future summer youth ministry events. Thank you to all those who participated in the eight-week Summer Bible Academy. We will resume midweek meetup for our Wednesday Bible study in late September. We are excited to announce that the St. James AME Chicago Food Pantry is now open again. If you yourself or if you know anyone in need, please come to the food pantry which is open every Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and is located at 9255 South Perry Avenue. Masks are required for entry. Following our worship service today, Sunday, August 29th, we will be hosting a Back to School Community Day from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. We will be giving out free school supplies and free COVID-19 vaccines. We will be partnering with the Wellness Home to provide the Pfizer vaccine for persons who are 12 years of age and older. Don't worry, if you haven't pre-registered yet for the vaccine, you can still stop by and get your vaccine today. Come out and end the summer with an afternoon of community service, food, and fellowship. Please spread the word to your family, friends, and those in your community. Remember to go to our website at stjamesamechicago.com to sign up for our email list to receive upcoming updates on future ministry events. Subscribe to our social media channels on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube to stay connected. Now, let us go into worship. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. So let us bless the Lord with all our soul and all that is within us. On this morning, good morning to you all. Good morning, St. James. Good morning, family and friends. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us on this Sunday. And so we ask that before we go further in this worship service, that you will share, that you will love, like, and share this broadcast so that we can all be digital evangelists. And so others will also be able to be included in this worship experience. So let us go forth. May God bless this service. May God bless the singing. May God bless the word. May God bless our prayers. And let us begin with praise and worship.
119 tells us, take a good look at my trouble and help me. This is an opportunity for all of us to gather together and pray and give God the praise just for another day. Let us pray. Dear precious and eternal Father, we come to you right now first and foremost saying thank you for another opportunity to gather as a church body, to gather as a family, to gather just one more time for worship service. We thank you, dear Lord, for just coming to us and allowing us to see another week, God. And we do not take that lightly. Do We do not take that for granted in such a world that is so unpredictable. So right now, we ask you, dear Lord, to bless this worship service, God. We ask you, dear Lord, to provide an increase to all those who are watching in the virtual sanctuary. We ask you, dear Lord, to be with all participants. And we ask you, dear Lord, to be with those who may not get a chance to see the worship service right now, but hopefully and prayerfully, they will tune in. Dear Lord, we ask you to be with our world, God. There's just so much going on, God, and we just ask that you would touch each and every one of us in a special way. We ask you, dear Lord, to be with our health. Dear Lord, that is something that sometimes, some time ago, we took for granted, God, and we can no longer take that for granted. So we ask for a special prayer to bless us just with basic health, God. We ask you, dear Lord, to be with all those who may be struggling, and we ask you, dear Lord, to bless them with the spirit of healing. We ask you to split, special, to just be with them in a special way. And dear Lord, God, we ask you right now to be with our country. There are a lot of things that we're trying to figure out here in the United States of America, God, and we need you right now. We ask you, dear Lord, to be with our state, and we ask you, dear Lord, to be with decisions that need to be made. And we ask you, dear Lord, to be with our city. With the chaos and trouble that may be on our rising, God, we ask you, dear Lord, for protection right now. And then, Lord, finally, we ask you to be in our homes. Bless each and every one of us right now. 
So we ask you, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, to keep us, to guide us, to protect us. Have your holy way. Forgive us for the sins that we've committed by thought, word, or deed. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And the people of God together said, amen. And the people of God said, amen. amen. Thank you, Reverend Cannon, for that very powerful prayer. We're here with a special pastoral announcement about COVID-19 and our re-entry. We know that for the last 18 months, 18 plus months, we have not been able to worship in person. We've been worshiping virtually for over 18 months. And we are now in this place where we want to start making preparations for re-entry. But we have some very special information that we want to share with you in order for us to make proper preparations. So indeed, St. James is looking forward to returning to in-person worship as part of our overall hybrid worship experience here at St. James AME Chicago. And as we prepare, as we work on our safety measures and our healthy protocols, for that return, we would like to hear from you. So we are asking that every member of St. James to go to our website at stjamesamychicago.com in order to fill out the re-entry survey. We want you to fill out the re-entry survey, which will ask about some of your feelings about coming back to worship as we prepare and as we hear your input as we move forward. So we ask that you uh, go to our website. The link for the survey will also will be in the next couple of weeks uh, newsletters where you can access the survey uh, there. But we ask that you will do it uh, prior to Friday, September 10th. We look forward to hearing from you. We look forward to seeing you again in person, but we have to make preparations and we need, we need to hear from you. So please, please, please fill out the survey by September 10th. Go to stjamesamechicago.com and press that re-entry survey link and we will move forward together.
St. James family. I'm so honored and blessed to stand before you on this Sunday morning. Um, I want to start off by giving thanks to Pastor Craig Robinson and Reverend Shakira for again allowing me the opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk. I believe that um, God has called me here on this morning to bring a good, a good news, bring a good word for his people. Now, if you could join with me in the book of Ezra, we will be uplifting the scriptures from the third chapter, verses 10 through 13. Again, that's the book of Ezra, uh, third chapter, verses 10 through 13. And I'll be reading from the New International Version of the Bible. And the scripture reads, and verse 10 starts with when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments and with trumpets and the Levites with symbols took their places to praise the Lord as prescribed by David, the king of Israel. With, the pra with praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord. He is good and his love towards Israel endures forever. All the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who had seen the former temple wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid. While many others shouted for joy, no one could distinguish it says no one could distinguish the sound of the shouts from the sounds of weeping because the people made so much noise and the sound was heard from far away. Uh, we now come upon a time when we are uh, exiting the uh, Olympic time, the Summer Olympics. They just happened last month. And I must admit that the Summer Olympics, I love to watch the Summer Olympics. This is a pastime for me and my mother. We always enjoyed sitting down um, on, on, in evenings during the Olympic period and just watching the Olympics. And one of my favorite, um, one of the best things that I like about the Summer Olympic is the torch lighting ceremony. That's the torch lighting ceremony. That ceremony started in 1928 Summer Olympics. Um, this is a ceremony that symbolizes harmony and togetherness of people all over the world as we have people from different countries coming to participate and compete in the Summer Olympics. Um, and the imagery that you have of people passing torch from one torch bearer to another torch bearer 
um, displays images of progressive human achievement. During uh, one summer Olympic torch relay, the, the flame traveled over 1,980 miles, being passed over 3,000 times. From torchbearer to torchbearer to torchbearer, the flame was passed as a symbol of unity and preservation. This imagery amazes me because at any point, if the torch had stopped being passed, or if the flame would have extinguished, at any point, if the runner had stopped running, the flame would not have made it to its final destination. Each torch bearer must do their part to keep the momentum. But when their time is up, when she has no more energy left to run, when his legs are about to give out and his heart begins to pump too fast, it is time for that torch bearer to pass the torch, relinquish their leadership and give up their title because only the young can run. And I would like to put a tag on this text entitled this sermon, Only the Young Can Run. In this year's Summer Olympic, we watched the unfolding of a storyline of a young, colorful woman by the name of Shikari Richardson. Uh, it was, I think most of us are familiar with her story and know that she was suspended from the U.S. Summer Olympic team and banned and thus banned from competing in the Summer Olympics due to testing positive for marijuana. In an, in an interview, Ms. Richardson accepted full responsibility for her actions and reported that she used marijuana as a coping mechanism for dealing with the emotional turmoil that has came as the result of the sudden passing of her mother. Many opinions have come out about whether it was right or wrong to block Shikari from competing, whether or not the rule that dictated that marijuana is an illegal substance is, is outdated because in most states it's no longer considered an illegal substance. Or even if Shikari had experienced some discrimination due to her being a young African American female in a white male dominated world. But you see, I'm not here on this morning to debate the semantics of right and wrong of this topic. I'm not here to say whether smoking weed is acceptable or not. I believe that is something that we all must struggle with and that we all must wrestle with and come to our own conclusions. What I am here to uplift for us on this morning is the phenomenon that happens all too often where young folk are not being past the torch or being blocked from participating in the advancement of society. What happens to our future if we are not creating pathways for our young leaders to thrive? What happens to our future when we are not allowing spaces for young people to cope and deal with trauma? Should the Olympic have suspended Shikari or should the Olympic have provided her therapeutic services? Should the Olympic have banned her from competing or should the Olympic team had, under, had understanding and created a pathway for her to redeem herself. I believe this is a timely message as this afternoon we will all be participating and present at the back to school fair at St. James, but it is also a timely, a timely message because tomorrow begins the first day of in-person learning for, for our Chicago public school students. And I believe in, in over a year they haven't been in school. And I believe it is important for us to remember that we are responsible for passing that torch, for uplifting our children, for encouraging in them and for leading them to the next milestone. So as we journey back to the story in Ezra, in this book of Ezra, it is a historical report where we have two political dynamics at play here. You see, in our Bibles, we have the book of Ezra and the book of Nehemiah as two separate books, but they're really written together. Two minor prophets experiencing one singular event and retelling it from different perspectives. One minor prophet is 
the in, in, in charge of remembering the past. And the other minor prophet was in charge of retelling or reimagining the right now. Even though we see these books as separate, they are both reporting a singular historical event. In about 500 BC, the ruler of Persia wrote a royal decree permitting all Israelites to return home from exile. Once the people of Israel began to return home, the first order of business was to conduct the census. After conducting the census, the Israelites built the altar. After they built the altar, the foundation of the temple was laid. This is where we meet the text here in Ezra, where the foundation of the temple is being laid and the priests and Levites began to put together a ceremony in celebration of the new foundation being laid. You see, this is the curious part of the text. It, it, it comes in at verse 12, where it says, but many of our older priests and Levites and family heads who had seen the former temple wept aloud. When they saw the foundation of the temple being laid, while many others shouted for joy. Here we have one group of people looking at a singular event, the laying of a new foundation, yet responding differently. Some weeping and some rejoicing. All depending on which generation they were from. Let's catch this. Some weeping and some rejoicing, all depending on which generation they were from. This particular text is troubling for the reader because here we have a mixture of exaltation and mourning from the memory of past calamity. Here, as we as critical Bible readers must pause because we have a mixture of hope for new beginnings, yet there is a fear of the uncertainty of what is to come. Ah, this text is intriguing to me because as a Bible reader, there is a mixture of life and a mixture of death all within the same text. You see, the rebuilding of the temple takes place about 49 years after the structure, after the destruction of the first temple. Let me say that again. The relaying of the new foundation happens about 49 years after the destruction of the first temple. So while some are rejoicing because the laying of this new foundation is a symbol for, for life to come or life to come, many are filled with sorrow because they remember the lives that were lost, the destruction that was endured, and the history that was stolen. I would like to use this text to talk to the church right now. This is this is a, is a personable conversation that we're having. And I don't mean to offend anybody, but this is something that I believe God wants me to take to the church. Church attendance in America is at its lowest point that it has ever been. Only about 50 percent of all Americans actively participate in religion. The same is true for black churches and even more so for black millennials. Our churches are missing an entire generation of people. What is even more interesting is that millennials believe in God. They even believe in Jesus Christ. But what they don't believe in is the church. I talk to many of my friends and when asked if they belong to a church or better yet, why they don't belong to a church, their answers are more than likely the same. There's a there, there's an answer that's more likely the same. I'm a spiritual person, but not a religious person. There is a major split in the black church between traditional and contemporary, between the remembering of the past and the here and now. And young people are either leaving more traditional churches for more contemporary settings or leaving the church altogether. And can I be real in the church house on this morning? What I have observed is that there's a major split in the black church because young folk have a sort of resentment toward the church. But also there's a split because some churches, we have stagnant and stale leadership. Leaders of the church in the morning, leaders, leaders of the church in more traditional settings are unwilling to pass the torch, unyielding to relinquish their leadership status and titles. 
I'm sure this is not happening here at St. James, but in other churches, in other parts of the globe, this is a real problem that we together must address. So what we see now happening in the black church is the shift from the old to the new, a torch being passed, a foundation being laid. In the black church worship experience, we have church services looking more like a Kanye West Donda tour or a Kanye West Sunday service concert. But just like in the book of Israel, the black, in the black church, we have one group of people looking at one singular event, the laying of the new foundation of the black church. Yet they are responding differently. Some weeping and some rejoicing, depending on which generation they are from. A mixture of exaltation and mourning from a memory of the past. We can look at the black church today and see the laying of a new foundation. Some are rejoicing for the laying of this foundation while others are weeping. Preachers and clergy don't look like they used to. Jeans and jogging suits are now acceptable in the pulpit. And if she doesn't have a dress and women are now able to preach in the pulpit and if she doesn't have a dress on, it doesn't mean that she's going to hell. Some look at this shift in the black church at, at, and, and worship and rejoice, but others look at it and mourn. You see, many of us struggle with change when the torch is passed on from one person to another. It is receiving and, and other people, it is being taken away. For one, it is a gift. For others, it is a loss. But you see, this is why I love God's word. Here in the text, it opens up in verse 13 and it reads, no one, I repeat, no one could distinguish between the sounds of shouts of joy or the sounds of weeping. Because the people made so much noise and the sound was heard from far away. After doing a little research, I found out that what we have here is actually known as a foundation deposit ceremony. A foundation deposit ceremony was a ceremony performed when a new foundation was being laid and a stone was being taken from the old foundation and placed in the new foundation. The older generation weren't just weeping because they missed what they had once knew. The people were weeping because it was a momentous occasion, a milestone in the story of the history. The younger generations weren't just rejoicing to themselves, but the shouts of joy were in honor of the older generation's sacrifices. You see, one was not pitted against the other but they were working in complementary fashion. The scripture doesn't say that the rejoicing was so loud that the weeping could not be heard, nor does it say that the weeping was so loud that the sounds of joy were drowned out, but that they were undistinguishable, heard from far away as one sound. The God who we serve is able to use both people's rejoicing and they're weeping for his glory. I don't want you to miss this move of God because in the scripture it shows in verse four, chapter four, verse one, it reads, when the enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard the exiles were building a temple for the Lord. Don't miss this. The indistinguishable sound was heard from far away. And the next verse says, when the enemies heard of what the exiles were doing. One more time, both weeping and shouting was so loud that it was heard from far away. And the enemies of the tribe of Israel were put on notice that something was happening. A move of God. Regardless of whether it was weeping or shouting, rejoicing or crying joy or sorrow, God used the sound to put the enemy, enemies on notice that a move of God was happening over here. I am so glad that I serve a mighty God, a God who says my weeping won't be in vain because all things, all things, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord. 
The laying of the new foundation is a wholehearted participation of the entire community. Let me say that one more time. The laying, the laying of a new foundation is a wholehearted participation of the entire community. Earlier in the chapter, it tells us that the older generations were strategically put in place to supervise and oversee the laying of the new foundation because they remember when the old foundation was laid. In 2017, in Houston, Texas, uh, an artist by the name of Chance the Rapper stood in a packed out stadium and quoted these lyrics. Magnify, magnify, lift it on high, Spit a Spotify to qualify, a spot at your side. I cannot modify or ratify. My mama made me apple pies, lullabies, and alibis. The book don't end with Malachi. The devil will, will win employee of the month by the dozen to one score in three years from the third when he doesn't. My village raised him a child. Come through the crib and it's busting. You meet anybody from my city, they gonna say that we cousins. Shabbat, Barak, edify. Electrify the enemy like Hedgewick till it petrifies any petty, petty, any Peter, petty, any petty Peter, Pettigrew can get a pesticide, 79, 79. I don't believe in science, I believe in science. Don't believe in science, I see dollar signs, color white, collar crime. Good God, the gift of freedom. Hosanna, Santa invoke and woke up slaves from Southampton to Chatham Manor. My dream girls behind me feel like I'm James Early. The type of worship make Jesus come back a day early with the faith of a pumpkin sea size mustard seed here. For I will speak noble things as entrusted me. Only righteous I might just shrug at the skullduggery. I couldn't see us I couldn't stand to see another rapper lose custody. Exalt, exalt, glorified. Descending upon the earth with swords and fortified. The borders where the shortest lie I used to hide from God. You see, Chance had an entire crowd, hands up, face full of tears. Singing, how great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. You see, no one came to the chance to rap a concert for church. No one came to be delivered. No one came to learn about Jesus, but a new foundation was being laid that night. Some people criticized him saying, what gives him the right? He didn't go to seminary. What gives him the right? He wasn't ordained. He didn't have on a clergy collar. But after it was all said and done, arms raised, head bowed that night, God got the glory. Whether reaping or rejoicing, God will use it for his glory. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess how great is our God. Every time the torch is passed, a new foundation is being laid. If the passing of the torch is a loss, give thanks to the Lord. For he is good and his mercy endures forever. If the passing of the torch is a gift, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures forever. The God who made the heavens and the earth, give thanks, for he is good, his love endures forever. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, give thanks, for he is good, his love endures forever. The God who hung his head and died on that old rugged cross, give thanks. Thanks for he is good and his love endures forever. The God who rose on the third day give thanks for he is good and his love endures forever. See, I don't know if you were following me, but you see, from moment to moment to moment throughout biblical history, every time the torch was passed. A new foundation was being laid and we should give thanks for he is good and his love endures throughout all history. The God who built his church, whoo, 
upon this rock gives thanks for he is good and his love endures forever. The God of Richard Allen and Absalom Jones gives thanks for he is good and his love endures forever. The God of our weary years and our silent tears gives thanks for he is good and his love endures forever. Though the God who has brought us thus far along the way give him thanks for he is good and his love endures forever. The God of your mama and your grandmama gives thanks for he is good and his love endures forever. You see, all throughout history, new foundations have continued and always been laid. And each time it turned out all right because God is good and his love endures forever. The next time you have a young person in your presence, uplift them, don't discourage them. Welcome them in, don't block them out. Uh, encourage them, don't discourage them. You see, these kids are embarking on a new journey. They are going back to school. Let's give them some uplift. Let's give them some encouragement. Let's tell them they can do it because they are going to be the ones that lay the new foundation for the church and for the world as a whole. And so we must play our part. You see, as a community, both the old and the new must work together in the laying of the new foundation. The new foundation wasn't done by one generation alone, but both generations. The older generation had to supervise the younger generation because the older generation knew what to do. The younger generation had to be receiving of the older generation's information because they knew how to honor what they had done. So the next time a millennial comes through our church doors, we're gonna, we're gonna offer them positions. We're gonna talk to them, we're gonna encourage them, we're gonna welcome them into the family. We're gonna let their creativity and their innovation blossom because it will take the old and the young to keep the flame of the AME church lit. Worship must be a blend of innovation and tradition. I leave you with this quote from an unknown poet. Be not the first by whom the new is tried, yet the last to lay the old aside. A word of God for the people of God. And the people of God said amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Brother David Wilson, for that message, an on-time word from the Lord. We want to open the doors of the church and extend an invitation to any and all who are watching today to become a Christian, to become a follower of Jesus Christ, to, to answer God's call to become part of his family. This is our invitation to Christian discipleship. And if you are here and you want to be saved, if you're here and you want to join St. James AME Church in the city of Chicago, we want you to very quickly let us know by going to our website, stjamesamechicago.com slash virtual church. On that page, you will find a membership form or a salvation form. Please fill one of those forms out or both of them and uh, submit it so that we can reach out to you and begin to walk alongside you in this new journey that you are taking with Jesus Christ. We are so excited about the decision that you are about to make. And we look forward to being there with you as you grow in Christ. Won't you pray with me? God, in Jesus' name, we are so grateful for the word that has gone forth, and we thank you for your invitation, which is always available to become a part of your family. Lord, if there's someone here that is trying to decide in their heart whether or not they should become a follower of Jesus, won't you lead them with your spirit that they might say yes to you today? Lord, there might be someone who is looking for community, looking for a place to belong. We also pray that you will nudge their heart and help them to see St. James as a place where they can find community. God, we know that you are present with us, even in cyberspace. And we pray for all of those who will make a decision today for you and to become a part of the church. 
We love you. We believe that you are God. And we thank you for this opportunity to respond to this call to salvation. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, please go to our website, stjamesamechicago.com. Fill out that salvation form or that church membership form. Let us know the decision you've made, and we look forward to connecting with you. God bless you and God keep you as we journey forward. It's giving time in this virtual space. Give God some hand praise for all that God is doing, has done, and continues to do. Jesus says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, and running over. There are actually three ways to give here at St. James. Feel free to go to our website, stjamesamechicago.com, and you can pay through PayPal or GiveLify. Or you can go send your tithes and offerings directly to 9256 South Lafayette, Chicago, Illinois, 60620. We want to thank you for partnering with us and giving. Let's pray. Eternal gracious God, we thank you for being an abundant giver unto us. You have given us life and health and strength. God, we are honored to give back to you and to the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. Bless this offering and these tithes may continue to be multiplied, that you would give the grace, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a wonderful worship experience we've had today. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you felt the presence of the Lord. Thank you for joining us in worship. Remember, you can join us every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook, YouTube, and on our website at stjamesamechicago.com. And if you're looking for a church home, or if you want to give your life to Christ, you want to start a new faith journey with us, make sure you go to our website, stjamesamechicago.com slash virtual church. On that page, you will find a salvation form or a church membership form. Fill one of those out so that we can connect with you and start this journey of faith with you. And now my brothers and sisters, let us receive this benediction. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen, amen, and amen. Go in peace, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit.